I bet you didn't know that Volkswagen Group actually owns 100% of Porsche since 2012. Or Tata Motors, an Indian company, owns the reliably unreliable Land Rover. Or that McLaren owns, well, McLaren. Who owns the world's most popular car brands here in the USA is about as clear as mud. Thick mud. The kind you slide through in your Rolls Royce that's owned by BMW? That's gotta be a mistake. There is no way that BMW owns the British icon Rolls Royce. It's a f***ing Rolls Royce. Are you kidding me? <sighs> okay, fine. I guess the granddaddy of fine British motoring is owned by BMW Group. So I'm gonna dig into the 12 automaker parent companies and dig into which brands are under their care. This is gonna be a fun one. It's great to see you guys again. Let's go. First on the list is the BMW Group, and their ownership structure is about as straightforward as it gets. First, they own BMW. That makes this BMW Z4 M40i, a playful roadster that is almost mechanically identical to the 2020 Supra. It's kind of like the Supra's brother from another mother. And Big Bad BMW also gets Mini, the little company you thought was British, and makers of the eerily capable John Cooper Works Countryman, a 300 horsepower blistering fast Mini station wagon. Or is it a station wagon that's a Mini? And we can't forget that they also own another British legend, Roll Rolls Royce with this BEAU to full $450,000 Phantom. Jeez, is anything British made in Britain anymore? Okay, one of the oldest car conglomerates in the world, Daimler AG, dates all the way back to 1926, which was before even Bernie Sanders was even born. And they have a slightly more complicated ownership structure than BMW. First, this premium auto corporation owns German motor giant Mercedes-Benz, who makes the big baller G550, the SUV that ups your social clout from zero to 100 real quick. And they also have Mercedes tuning division, AMG, makers of such high performance cars such as the AMG GTR Pro, a hardcore track model monster ready to rip some tires. Oh, and if that's not rich enough for your blood, then Daimler AG has something for you. They also own Mercedes-Benz Maybach, who make a limo fit for Darth Vader, the S650 sedan, extravagant enough for the chosen one. In 2014, Fiat and Chrysler tied the knot and created Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, or FCA for short. And uh, they hold quite a few brands under their umbrella, like Alfa Romeo, the quirky Italian brand that makes the impossible to pronounce Giulia Quadrivologgio, a shapely four-door sedan with enough Italian seasoning to make it as delicious to drive as it is to look at. Is it Quadrifoglio or Giulia Quadrifoglio? Yeah, anyway. And of course, they have Fiat, Italy's notoriously unreliable brand and makers of the spunky little match for a Miata, the 160 horsepower Fiat 124 Spider. And to sum up the Italian trifecta, the group controls Maserati, who makes the Levante, a $75,000 Italian job or SUV that I think only four people or so bought and I think they love them. And on this side of the Atlantic, the Fiat Chrysler Automobile Group are in control of Dodge, who make dodgy things like this $71,000 SRT Hellcat widebody with 707 horsepower, a tire shredding four-door kitty with a hell of a growl. And they also own Ram trucks. That's right, your all-American 3500 HD pickup with a thousand foot-pounds of torque is made in part by Italians. Incredible! And did you know, they also own America's favorite war machine turned mall crawler brand, Jeep, who just released the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon diesel for about 50K, which is an ideal deal if you need to reach the top of a mountain and you wanna use your vegetable oil you cooked your french fries in as fuel. Famoco, or Fix or Repair Daily, or just Ford Motor Company, used to have a bunch of different automakers in their back pocket, like Aston Martin, Mazda, Jaguar, Land Rover, and Volvo. But nowadays, Ford is going with a much more minimalist lifestyle, focusing on their namesake, Ford, and their pride and joy, the Shelby GT500, baby, which is packed with supercar performance and a little pony price tag under 80K. And Lincoln, with the full-size Lincoln Continental, 
a big body luxury sedan with throwback styling, oozing with comfort and power, making it a magic bullet fit for a president. And I bet you didn't know this, the largest automobile manufacturer in the USA is General Motors. They are massive. GM was founded by William C. Durant in 1908, back when Buick existed. What, really? Wow, I guess Buick still exists. Grandpa Larry is gonna be so thrilled to hear that because he'd probably love driving this 310 horsepower Buick Regal Sportback GS. An often, well, overlooked sleeper that'll get you from the golf course to the early bird special and home to bed before six. And for those of us younger than Grandpa Larry, GM's luxury brand Cadillac sells the 550 horsepower CT6 V Blackwing, a hard-edged luxury monster with a twin turbo V8. Enough said. And of course, one of the biggest names under GM, Chevrolet, who recently rocked the sports car world with the new mid-engine C8 Corvette. Supercar performance for under 60,000 bucks, baby. Let's go! That thing's gonna be bad ass. And lastly, GM's namesake. GMC makes the 2.8 liter Duramax diesel Canyon Denali, a solid truck that can roll coal. Well, believe it or not, the little Japanese car company that could, Honda, actually started by selling clip-on engines that attached to your bicycle way back in the 1940s, and then carried that Honda reliability over to cars starting in 1963. And the rest, as they say, is history. And now they have two brands. Honda with the wicked hatchback, front-wheel drive Civic Type R, a daily drivable track star with a ton of racing history, and Acura with their super trick back from the dead mid-engine supercar known as the NSX, which is good, not great at just about everything. Hyundai? Hyundai? How, how does the commercial go? Oh right, Hyundai like Sunday. No, Hyundai like Sunday. That's how it goes. The Hyundai Motor Group has only a couple of automotive brands, but is one of the largest vehicle manufacturers in the world. They, of course, are responsible for Hyundai, with the futuristic looking Hyundai Volostar N, inspired by their efforts in the World Rally Championships and touring car efforts. This 275 horsepower hatchback comes in in under 30,000 bucks, and it puts the fun in funky. They also own the Hyundai offshoot brand Genesis, with some interesting options in the mid-sized luxury car space, like their G80, which is a strong value, but not top tier. And interestingly enough, they own Kia. It's a strange relationship. They're technically owned by the same company, but they stay separate and compete against each other. And the competition is fierce with the Kia Soul EV, a quirky, adorable electric car that was once marketed by hamsters. Not technically one company, but a strategic partnership. The Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi Alliance was formed in 1999 and sells one in every nine cars in the world. And if you were to ask me, the star of this alliance is definitely Nissan, makers of the Nissan GTR, or better known as Godzilla. Just one thing, Nissan, could you please give this old dinosaur an update already? And Nissan's luxury offshoot, Infiniti, which has the Q60 Performance Coupe, which is more luxurious than it deserves to be. And the European part of this trifecta is Renault, which was a established 120 years ago and continues to have a storied history to this day. They do make some pretty interesting cars that I wish we got stateside, like the Renault Megane Trophy R, which crushed a lap time at the Nürburgring in under eight minutes. And last and probably least, Mitsubishi, who still sells the Mitsubishi Eclipse as a crossover, and they also discontinued the Lancer Evolution a few years ago, so they're just dead to me. What the? Oh, Tata Motors is the fun sounding Indian auto company that you've probably never heard of. They own a ton of brands worldwide and yet, again, proving that nothing British is actually British, they're the makers of both Jaguar and Land Rover. Crikey. Indian or British, the 550 horsepower Jaguar F-Type R is a fun, fast, loud cat on wheels. And the $90,000 Land Rover Range Rover combines beauty and brawn into one menacing beast that'll probably break down as soon as you leave the dealership.
Now, Toyota Motor Corp is going to be the shortest honorable mention in, well, it's just going to be short because they only own Toyota and Lexus. Let's go. Volkswagen, once upon a time, used to be this little-known automaker that started off building the people's car. A cheap rear-engine people hauler known as the VW Beetle. And thanks to that little bug, VW has grown into something spectacular. First, they now own Audi, who pound for pound creates one of the best supercars with this R8. A real, daily drivable supercar and the choice of Tony Stark's everywhere. They also own Bentley makers of the gigantic Bentley Continental GT, which is actually using a Porsche Panamera platform. That's the benefit of these huge auto megacorps, shared technology. And Bugatti is the brand with the most, the most horsepower, the most turbos, and the most money required to buy. Put it all together and you have a V8 quad turbo coupe with 1500 horsepower that will take you up to 304 miles per hour. Holy heck boys, we need to start saving $3 million stat. And Bugatti isn't the only supercar brand powered by Volkswagen. The Italian raging bulls at Lamborghini are also made possible by the Germans too. Want to rodeo on wheels? Hop in your Huracan Performante and your face will be torn off by a V10 taking you zero to 60 in less than three seconds. And near and dear to this little heart, Volkswagen owns Porsche, but also Porsche owns the majority share of Volkswagen Auto Group. So who owns who? Who cares? As long as they keep putting out cars like the GT2 RS, the most powerful 911 ever made. And last but not least, they own themselves. Volkswagen, still making the people's car with the cheap and versatile GTI, a practical commuter with sports car pedigree. Zhejiang Geely Holding Group. Did, did I say that right? Zhejiang Holding Group? Zhejiang Geely Holding Group? also just known as Geely, is relatively new to the game. Being founded in 1986 and, believe it or not, was a refrigerator company. But this Chinese coalition has been able to make a dent in the automotive world rather quickly with some strategic acquisitions. Recently in 2017, they acquired Lotus. Starting to see a theme here, yet another Brit icon owned by an outside company. Lotus is still going strong though with the Evora GT, a mid-engine supercharged sports car built for the track and unleashed on the streets. They also purchased Volvo from Ford back in 2010 and today make the $50,000 XC90, a stylish, luxurious SUV packed with cutting edge tech and features. And if you need a faster Volvo, Geely also runs Polestar, the performance offshoot of Volvo, who's coming out with the Polestar 1, a highly capable plug-in ready for action. Okay, I know it's a long list, but what about the holdouts, the independents, the brave few who refuse to take on a sugar daddy? I want a sugar daddy. Ferrari stands on its own as an Italian hyper-luxury sports car manufacturer that always pushes the envelope. My boy James Bond's favorite mark, Aston Martin, is still undeniably British. Japan's maker of the most popular all-terrain capable cars, Subaru, has stayed independent for its entire 66-year history. Mazda, who makes the Miata that we know is always the answer, is still free of any corporate overlords to this day, even after flirting with Ford for a few years. And Tesla is a tech company that builds cars, or, is it a car company that builds tech? Either way, Tesla is electrifying the future of automobiles, all on their own. And McLaren Group, whose business plan is to essentially release a car or model every single year. And every year they keep getting better. Wow, okay, so did you figure out who owns the company that makes your car? Let us know down in the comments. And if you do like to drive your car like we do here at Ideal Media, I bet you're doing a few things wrong. So stop making these six driving mistakes that ruin your car and it'll cost you a lot of money. Or check out what YouTube recommends you watch next. Oh, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe. But either way, you can't lose. And as always, keep living that ideal lifestyle.